Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad down here in the Dirty Dirty at Premier Leather Crafters with another video. Today, I was sitting here working on a pair of the custom flippers from the Crystal line, and I, I thought it would be a. I don't think that I've done a video. I don't think that I have done a video on this uh, most important tool, which is the wing divider. This is an important tool here, which you can purchase this at any leather crafts uh, you can purchase these from Tandy you can purchase them from Weaver you can purchase these from Springfield any any leather crafts store that sells products but I bought this little jewel at Harbor Freight um, no I don't get paid from Harbor Freight I don't get a check from Tandy I don't get a check from none of these people my videos are strictly to show you guys uh, a little bit of insight how to do it an economical way to achieve massive uh, results or uh, the same results and maximize your money so you can go to Tandy and buy these for like I think they're like $5.99 or $7.99 I paid two bucks this was a dollar ninety nine two dollars and fifteen cent with tax and all from Harbor Freight does the same thing now the importance of the wing divider in leather crafting work, and I'm going to show you guys this or tell you guys this, is for one reason. Uh, especially, uh, I was doing these, casing these out, and you guys already know. Now, if you can look at this, you can tell the odd shape that I cut the leather in, and you can also see the darker line, which is the actual sole to this flipper itself. And, uh, but I, I took the, I, I cut this out oddly, cut it out a uh, very odd shape. Now, uh, being the reason why I've done that is because when I start the stamping and tooling and backgrounding and beveling and doing whatever, I don't want the shape of my leather to alter and change. Now, and if you watch, if you are a subscriber to the videos that I do, you already know that I line or case uh, or tape the backside, the flesh side to my piece to help it to the duct tape will help it hold in place so it, it doesn't alter in shape that way and this is to cut it a little bit bigger is a secondary way to make sure that it doesn't because when I go to tooling and background and like I said before it doesn't make the, the leather or the pattern warp or change so this is why leather crafters do that but there will be no way for me to take my swivel knife guide and to cut this border in, as you already see here, uh, generally that's what I do. And a lot of crafters make the mistake of cutting their pieces exact. It doesn't matter what you do, whether it be it a belt, a bracelet, a cuff, or whatever, or even flippers, purses, whatnot. It doesn't matter. You can't cut, do not cut your pieces exact. Do not cut it on the exact line that you want the piece to be. Because when you, again, when you go to doing your tooling work, it's going to change and alter the shape. Especially for you guys out there who's working with the economy grade or lesser grade uh, leather than Craftsman Oak or Herman Oak or European, European blend uh, leather. You don't want to do that. Now, in my earlier years when I was working with economy grade and lesser grade leather, your B or C grade, whatever, I know, I know the money gets tight. But even if the money is tight, this is an extra precaution by cutting that piece longer because the integrity of the flesh side of the leather is weak in some spots. This is why they sell it at a cheaper price. So to protect that and make sure that it doesn't alter and move on you, case it with uh, or tape the background backside with duct tape. Original strength. I was in Walmart the other day and I saw that they have several different strengths of the duct tape. So I would recommend use basic strength or the original strength duct tape. Might cost you a little bit more money, but it's better. You can get the big roll that's about 55 yards. And to do these, this is not 55 yards, so you can have that little roll of duct tape forever. But the wing divider, and I hate that I've done this already, but uh, I attempted to do another video and my tape or my filming memory ran out. I have so many pictures and stuff on there. but. The wing divider, and I'm just going to show you this because I can't do it in another way, but after you case your leather, dampen it or wet it, mist it, moist it, whatever, you want to take your wing divider and you want to put that on that line 
your true line and you just want to follow that line all the way around whatever piece you're working on that will scribe you in and this is I want you to look at this the dual points here which this is a machinist tool really realistically machinists use this to scribe or etch into metal or steel whatever way they're trying to weld or cut or grind and you, this, the two metal points will scribe a line into the metal or even aluminum, whatever they're working with. But as a leather crafter, this works perfect to scribe you a line into your leather. And it will also uh, allow you to have a nice even line that matches or mirrors your actual borderline. Now, I'm not going to cut this, and even after I get do my tooling work, uh, get done with my tooling work and my background and a bevel or whatever, a lot of art I'm going to put on this, I'm still not going to. Now, I would recommend that you guys cut your pieces a quarter to a half inch bigger than the actual line itself. Now, and if you're working with flippers or even if you're working with belts, and, uh, I know, and this is something that I just transitioned over to was doing a two-part belt. I really didn't want to do two-part two -part belts because that's what department stores do. They, they say that two-part and three-part belt, you know, and then you can pull it apart and eventually come apart or whatever and this doesn't look good. But I, in my earlier years, I used to leave the interior part of my belts raw because I wanted my customers to see that flesh side to let them know that it was leather all the way through and I was spending the money on getting eight to nine ounce because that was my leather that I worked with now as I develop more into crafting I've dropped my weight in leather to start using six to seven ounce as the exterior part of my belt and then on the interior part of my belt I use anywhere from 2.5 to 3. Now that will still give me my 8 to 9 ounce weight. Um, some crafters I know even go down to 7 ounce on the exterior part and then they'll put an additional 1.5 or 2.5 to line. Now, And I'm going to tell you why and then this I'm going to show you a quick example. This is this here is 1 ounce on the interior part of the flip flop and then on this side here uh, where I actually took and inlaid the snake on this this is two ounce so I'm still getting the three ounce thickness but I'm using two pieces and this is because of anybody who's done inlaid work you know you're going to use two pieces anyway even though I've done a video that showed you how you can inlay with one piece by having that mule's foot uh, using your mule's foot to separate the uh, the one piece of leather you can do that if you choose but just to make it a little bit more crisp and a little bit more professional grade look um, once I put this on the grinder or on a sander I'm going to sand this down and burnish this to look all one piece so you won't be able to tell those two pieces then I'm going to follow that up with my beeswax and then I'm going to follow that up with my edge slicker to, to really hide that two piece line so to a customer's eye nobody knows it's going to be two pieces except me and of course you who are out here trying to do this leather crafting business and the same thing is going to go for the flippers now the flippers are a three part three piece base or sole two pieces of leather and then I'm going to put my rubber sole on the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing with that I'm going to go back and grind that in to where it's going to all burnish and melt that leather into one looking piece I think I'm going to show you real quick this is the result of what you're going to look at so this is not one thickness sole this is actually two leather pieces here and then my rubber base here or my rubber sole there and we just burnish that and burnish that and grind that until it all looks like one piece. So really you still can tell the two pieces from the rubber and the leather. But I'm going to go back and put some more beeswax work on there and put some more edge coats finished so that will all be one solid color. You really can't hide that because the sole is black and then the leather itself is brown. So you're still going to be able to see those different coloration in the sole. But... Is no different than a regular shoe that you buy out of the department store where you have that black sole on the bottom then you might have a white cushion or whatever color cushion that the shoe company used same thing here the thing is that we're going to hide this two parts leather on that 
So, uh, getting back to the wing divider, hey, I hope this helped you guys. Invest. Invest in you at Wing Divider. Harbor Freight all day long. $1.99. If you have a Harbor Freight in your area, go pick you up a set of Wing Dividers. And then when you trace out the base of your pattern, as I done with the dark line, I'm going to come back and cut a quarter to a half inch larger than my actual line. And then I'm going to come back and case that. And then I'm going to put my Wing Divider on here to start scribing out my interior line so now I can start doing my tooling work my carving work and is tremendously is going to help you out as far as your carving work I hope that helped you guys out y'all stay tuned oh and I can show you here see how that turned out and then I can do my carving work my tooling work whatever I want to do uh, hope that helped you guys out thank you guys for chilling with me these 11 minutes if you have any questions, drop your questions in the comment section below. Subscribe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on all of them. Uh, on the Premier Leather Crafters or Cowboy PLC. See you guys on the other side. Peace.